On today's episode of Let's Talk Drones, we're going to be talking about how you, somebody that doesn't know a lot about drones, that's right, this video is for people that don't fly drones or at least don't know a lot about drones, how you can safely interact with drones and drone pilots and protect yourself. So whether you fall in the camp of concerned citizens or you're somebody that flies drones regularly, you're going to learn something new today on Let's Talk Drones. What's up? It's Chris, the Drone Geek, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Drones. Let's Talk Drones is brought to you by The Droning Company. Check out this sick swag they sent me. We've got a shirt here with a little pocket on it. It's got The Droning Company on the pocket. I also got another t-shirt from them as well as a sweatshirt. And check this out. This sick insulated cup. You can put water in this and it'll stay cold almost all day. It is absolutely amazing, especially in the dead of Pennsylvania summer where it gets very hot and humid up here in north central Pennsylvania. In fact, let's go ahead and test it out. Just take a little drink here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Ah, refreshing. You know, that tastes like freedom, love, and drones. You're not going to get that in any other cup. The Droning Company is across all the major social media platforms. Make sure you check them out online at thedroningcompany.com for a second to none job board and plenty of resources to make you a more well-rounded commercial remote pilot. And the best thing about the Droning Company is they don't take anything off the top of any jobs that you get on their job board. And it's only $10 a month to be a member of the Droning Company. Cancel anytime, thedroningcompany.com and the Droning Company across all major social media platforms. So today's video is geared more towards the person that doesn't know a lot about drones or doesn't fly drones, but is concerned about drones. I've recently had some experiences in my life in my hometown that have inspired me to make this video. Now, I'm not gonna get into a crazy amount of detail, but I have two stories I wanna share with you before we jump into the meat of this video. The first one is, recently I was at the pool with my family, our community pool, in Jersey Shore, Pennsylvania, just reliving some nostalgia from when we were kids. You go over to the community pool, hang out, get snacks, swim, have fun with your friends, all that good stuff. So we were sitting there at the pool, I had my new niece with me, she's just a month old, month or two old at this point, and we were having a great time. During some downtime though, I decided, well, I'm gonna get my drone out and I'm gonna fly it. Launched it, didn't fly over any people, didn't photograph, video anyone in particular, just wanted to enjoy the views of the pool and around the pool as well. Landed the drone, didn't fly over anyone again, had it in visual line of sight the entire time, put it away in my bag, and about 10 minutes went by before the popo showed up. That's right. Tidot and Valley Regional Police showed up to check out what was going on. Now, luckily, I knew the two responding police officers, and I actually played tennis with one and was pretty close with him at one point in high school. So, you know, they came up, both the officers knew me, and they were like, hey, we got a call, just asking you no more drone. And, uh, you know, inside, I was like, oh, but on the outside, I didn't want to give them any trouble. I didn't want to waste any more of their time than I had to. And I just wanted to be understanding. So I said, yeah, you know what? I was done anyway. I won't launch it, launch it again while I'm here. They went on their way. Everything was good. Uh, the other story that I have is I was flying my drone in the Pine Creek Valley around a local business and through the valley near the business to get some cool shots for that business owner who's also a family friend. And I was about 35 feet away from some houses that were nearby the business when I was flying my drone and I heard this conversation take place almost verbatim. Hey, is that your drone? No, it isn't. Okay, well, I'm gonna shoot it down. Okay, cool. That's almost verbatim what happened. It's kind of wild. And you know, it's, it's something that, again, being a drone pilot, being an advocate for drone pilots and being somebody that wants to help educate, not just people that want to fly drones, but people that don't have any desire to fly, but are maybe concerned about what all goes into flying drones. It, it just, it sort of hurts me at a level that some people can't understand. Uh, if you're a drone pilot, you can understand it, but if you're not, you, I don't think you can really truly understand what it feels like because we're perceived sometimes as like mischievous, trying to get away with something. And it's, it's because of the stigma that comes with drones, that surveillance stigma. There are the flying cameras that just fly all over the place and have access to almost anything that they want. 
A, that's not necessarily true, but B, most of us don't really care what's going on with you, your family, your household, whatever the case may be. We're just flying to get the views around it. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the rules and regulations that we follow and the rules and regulations that you also have to follow, whether you're aware of them or not, when it comes to interacting with a drone. So I'm not gonna get into all the nitty gritty with drone pilots, but just know this, because this video is for people that don't fly drones, you need to understand a few things. First of all, we can only fly up to 400 feet according to the FAA, because anything above 400 feet, there's a higher likelihood that there will be manned aircraft in the area, and that causes a safety concern for those particular aircraft, airplanes, helicopters, etc. Also, we have to maintain visual line of sight with our drone at all times. Now, we don't necessarily have to be the ones that have visual line of sight, but we have to have somebody there that we call a visual observer that can always see the drone with the naked eye no matter where it's flying. That's, that's the rule of thumb. And the third is, this one's a little bit dicey because there are some caveats with this one that I, again, I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty with, but general rule of thumb, most drones that you see on the market from DJI, Autel, these companies that are more popular, more mainstream, you can't fly over groups of people. It's just sort of something that you're not allowed to do. It, it, unless they're directly involved with the operation of the drone, it's actually against the rules to fly over people. So those are the important things that you need to remember and need to know when it comes to interacting with drone pilots. Those are the big three rules that you need to understand. When it comes to interacting with the drone, let's go ahead and dissect these two points I wanna talk about today and how they relate to the stories that I just told you that I experienced recently. First and foremost, when it comes to a drone flying around you, your property, your family, your friends, whatever, don't call 911. <laughs> It might seem common sense to most people, but there are some people that call 911 because there's a drone flying around them, their family, or their property. That's the emergency services line. A drone flying around you, your property, your family, is most likely not an emergency. Now, if there's something that could do you harm attached to that drone, I mean actual physical harm, or the drone itself is physically putting you in jeopardy, a little different, okay? I completely understand why you would maybe call 911 at that point, because there's a threat to your life. That's an emergency, or your well-being, rather. However, if the drone is just flying around, it is not an emergency. There's nothing that drone can do to you that warrants an emergency call. Here's my suggestion. If you see a drone, especially if you see a drone that's being launched, landed, you can see the operator, you can actually see the person controlling the drone, approach them first. Do it with caution. Of course, there are always exceptions to that rule, but most of the time we're pretty reasonable. We're able to talk to you and at least answer basic questions that you might have, okay? Approach us first, ask us what we're doing, ask us you know, what we're shooting, but don't do it in an accusational way. Do it in a very like inquisitive way. Ask us because you're interested. Even if you're not interested and you're just trying to understand whether or not we're spying on you, if you put up that front, we're more likely to respond with excitement and share with you what we're doing. And then you'll be put to ease to know that we're not actually filming you or your house or your kids. We're filming the mountainside behind it, or we're filming something completely in the opposite direction and it just looks like our drone is facing towards your house. That's my first suggestion. If you can't see the drone pilot or the drone pilot is being um, non-cooperative in that they're not giving you the peace of mind that you need, to know that they're not acting in a harassing manner or they're not conducting surveillance on you or your family illegally, that's when I, I recommend you do this. Film the drone. Just get it on camera, film it, establish a pattern. If that drone establishes a pattern of suspicious behavior, i.e. flying very close to your windows or your house or you as a person, harassing you, following you, if you start to establish a pattern, and you have video evidence of that pattern, at that point then, you have a case to stand on when you do call the police. Hey, this drone is doing this, I need somebody to take care of it. At that point, an investigation can begin and something can be done about what's going on with the drone and how it relates to you. Third and final scenario is if you absolutely are sure this drone is harassing you, conducting surveillance, something along those lines. Call the police, inform the police of this because they take care of the matter as it relates to the operator and you. 
but also send that video in, send that evidence in and your complaint into your local FAA office. You can type in local FAA office or local FAA official to your area and you'll be able to actually email them with the evidence of the illegal operations as well as all of the complaints that you have against the drone pilot. They'll have the resources to then look into it and figure out what might be going on and help you actually take legal action against that drone pilot. That system's not totally fleshed out yet. That's coming with remote ID in what's supposed to be 2023. We'll see if that actually happens, but that is something that they're looking to take care of moving forward into the future. That's my first course of action, okay? Let's talk about shooting a drone down, impeding a drone's flight in any capacity, okay? So this is where it gets a little bit more specific. Again, keeping in mind those rules and the fact that you can't legally use a drone to harass or survey a person or persons or property, keep that in mind, okay? Plus those other rules we talked about, the three other ones. I'm gonna pull up a whiteboard here so that you can see it in plain text as I talk you through this, because I think it's important that you understand these rules if you've ever thought about trying to shoot a drone down or do anything to impede the operation of a drone. So, according to the FAA, any unmanned aircraft, regardless of how big or small it is, is covered under Title 18 of US Code 32. A drone is, by this very definition, an unmanned aircraft. So, shooting it down would be a violation of US Code 32, and you could spend a considerable portion of your life behind bars if convicted, up to 20 years with a felony charge. So, weigh your options there. Drones are seen as aircraft. They are no different other than the fact that you operate them remotely versus actually sitting in a cockpit and flying the actual vehicle. They are considered the same as an airplane or a helicopter in the regard that you cannot shoot it down. That includes shooting it with any type of ammunition, shooting nets at it, throwing nets at it, obstructing a drone's flight, bringing it down from its flight, or sabotaging the aircraft in any way, shape, or form is a felony charge. And if you're convicted, you can face up to 20 years in prison. And if you don't get that, you're going to get a buttload of fines. And I'm talking hefty, hefty fines. Do not, I cannot stress this enough, do not shoot a drone down. You might get away with it. Chances are you won't. The drones have telemetry, have data that they actually collect as they're flying so that I can see where the drone's last ping was. I can then triangulate approximately how close you were to the drone. And then I can narrow my audience of potential people that shot it down to a very, very fine number of people. Chances are I'm going to make some headway with that. So don't shoot a drone down. Now you might be asking, okay, I can't shoot it down, but can I jam the signal so that it can't operate properly if it's flying around my property? The answer to that is also no. So let's go ahead and bring that whiteboard back up. According to the Communications Act of 1934, it is illegal to interfere with any kind of radio transmission, making jamming the communication system of a drone a criminal offense. Yeah, you can't jam the drone either. Basically, any sabotage of the flight or the, the drone itself is absolutely illegal and prohibited under two different laws. That includes actually physically sabotaging the aircraft as well as jamming the communication signal between the operator and the drone itself. You just can't do it. So you can't bring the aircraft down, but you might be asking yourself, well, if it's flying over my house, I own the airspace up to my house. That's common law. It's true. It is common law. There is a, an old common law that states a property owner has legal rights over all the land beneath their property, which is a great thing if you happen to be on top of a gold or oil deposit. You also have legal rights in the sky above it, up to the periphery of the universe. That's according to old common law. However, in a court case titled the United States versus Cosby, no, that's not C-O-S-B-Y, it's C-A-U-S-B-Y, it was determined that there was an enveloping atmosphere rule that needed to be put in place. And essentially what this rule states is that property owners do own the airspace above their property within reason. That means only the airspace that you can reasonably use. So if you've got a three-story house, you might have some airspace above your house that you are reasonably entitled to and that is your private property. But that's sort of a gray area that we really haven't gotten to the meat of to determine a black and white. This is yours. This is everybody else's. But just think of it this way. You basically have the airspace above your property. And then above that, you've got what is basically a public roadway for drones or airway rather in this case. So it's really hard to tell you exactly when a drone is infringing upon that 
airspace above your property. My rule of thumb is this though, and I sort of referenced this in the previous point. If the drone is flying near your windows, conducting surveillance and they can get a clear shot of you on your property. I mean, like they're right above you and, and it's acting in a harassing or disruptive behavior. I mean, truly disruptive. I mean, truly harassing. Then you've got grounds to go ahead, record the behavior, establish that pattern and send that evidence in to the FAA as well as your local police department or your state police barracks. That's what my suggestion would be for you, because since there is such a gray area there, it, you can't reasonably expect a drone pilot to know exactly where that line is, just like you probably don't know exactly where that line is or what might be considered like reasonable use. So yeah, could you technically build a tower that's 400 feet tall in your yard? Depends upon where you live, but I suppose it's physically possible. But that doesn't mean that you're going to reasonably do that. However, if you own a farmhouse and you've got silos that are 120 feet tall with corn or whatever in them, you can reasonably say that the airspace up to 120 feet, that's a huge silo, but the airspace up to 120 feet is reasonable use for you. For sure. For sure. It just really comes down to common sense. That's what it comes down to. And that's what any of this com comes down to. So keep that in mind as well. Yes, you do have some entitlement to the airspace above your home, but not as much as you'd think. I can fly over your home probably as little as 10 feet and it's not considered disruptive or infringing upon your privacy or your rights as a property owner. So just like keep that in mind. It, yes, but no at the same time. I don't want to get preachy about this because I'm not trying to be preachy. I'm trying to educate. And I think that it's important for somebody that advocates for drone pilots, advocates for drone technology, and is passionate about drones, that I don't just speak to the people that are like me, I speak to the people that aren't like me when it comes to UAV technology. I want everybody to feel comfortable because drones are becoming a way of life. You see them taking a little bit of a hold over the food delivery service, as well as they're being used to transport medical supplies, including human organs from hospital to hospital. Obviously, they've been around for a while for people building and flying them in the form of model airplanes, photographers using them for aerial photography. There's tons of different applications that drones can be used for. And as we move further and further into the future, if we continue to innovate and we continue to find uses for remote technology, you're only going to see more drones in the sky, on the ground and everywhere else. So it's important that you be ready because there's no stopping this technology from making its way into day-to-day -day life. Understand it though understand what it's capable of, understand what your rights are, understand what a drone operator's rights are. It, it's important to be educated because if you're educated, you can then know roughly what you need to do in order to protect yourself, your loved ones, and your property. So if you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit the thumbs up icon down below. If you weren't interested in drone technology, but now you are, great that's awesome i would recommend that you hit the subscribe button down below helps me out a lot helps to grow this channel get it out into the algorithm and recommend it to more people that think like you and i about drone technology they're interested in it they're passionate about it they want to learn more about it this channel is all about drone content shot by drones shot about drones shot for drone pilots that's what this channel is about so i highly recommend you hit that subscribe button if you're a drone pilot and you haven't already if you really like this video you want to subscribe to my channel and you want to get updates when I post new videos, hit that bell icon down below too. It'll give you a notification that lets you know every time I post a new video so you can be one of the first people to see it, which is pretty cool. This is your second reminder to go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that bell icon. Until next time, I'm Chris, the Drone Geek, and I am out of here.